Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's United Church of Christ, which is downtown Wausau, Wisconsin. I'm so glad to have you joining us. We do have a couple of announcements today. It's the beginning of the month, so a new communicator has come out. And there's a few things in the communicator that I'd like to touch base on just a little bit. First and foremost, we have lots of youth events that are coming up this year. And our middle school Tuesdays have turned into Teen Tuesdays. And so if you have teenagers, they are more than welcome to join us. Our first event, though, is coming up very, very soon, and we're going to be going to Noah's Ark. So if you're at all interested in joining us, please call the office and we reserve your spot in the bus. Also, we have our Clawson dinner shows, and we have three of them coming up after today's date. Today's date actually is one of the shows. This day we're going to be seeing the Patsy Klein show, and I'm excited about that. This Sunday, we'll be celebrating our graduates. And so even today, I'll be sharing a story uh, from Dr. Seuss for our children's moment about the places you go. And also, a Sunday summer school begins again on June 13th. I should say summer Sunday school. There we go. Lots of events. Please watch the bulletin. Please look into the communicator, and please stay informed about all the things that are happening here at St. Paul's. With that, I invite you to join with me in our opening hymn for the day. It is on page 628 of your hymnal, or else the words are printed within your bulletin. One of our favorites here at St. Paul's, Precious Lord, take my hand. <laughs> to worship this day. I invite you then to join with me in our welcoming hymn, for you see, all are always welcome in this place. to you, God of life, and you have healed us. You have restored life to us. Praise God, all you saints. Give thanks to God's holy name. God's favor is for a lifetime and beyond. Weeping may fill the night, but through God, joy will come in the morning. Hear us, O God, and be gracious to us. You have turned our mourning into dancing and our grief into gladness. We will give thanks to you, O God, forever and ever. Please join with me also in the opening prayer. Ever-present God, 
as we enter this holy place in body, mind, and spirit, move us to settle into the knowledge that we are never separated from your presence. Your all-encompassing love binds us to your unending grace. As we seek to recognize your presence and your grace, reveal it to us now, we pray. Amen. I continue to print passing of the peace in our bulletins. I would invite you to turn to whoever may be in the room with you and greet them this day. Jesus said to them, peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. May the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. So, peace, my brothers and my sisters. Well, as I mentioned in our announcement time, this Sunday is the day that we recognize our graduates. And we have several graduates here at St. Paul's. And throughout the years, I've always shared just one of my favorite books. It was a gift that was given to me when I graduated from seminary. It's called, Oh, the Places That You Go. Very familiar, it's by Dr. Seuss. And I would love to share the story with you today. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. And you have brains in your head and you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own. And you know what you know. And you are the guy or the gal who decides where to go. You look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you'll say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down just any old street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's open there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as brainsy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you will go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers and soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed You'll pass the whole gang, and soon you'll take lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups will happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickery perch, and your gang will fly on, and you'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down with a lurch from an unpleasant bump, and the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not for much fun, because unslumping yourself is not easily done. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're dark. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much will you lose? How much will you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right in three quarters, or maybe not quite? Or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple, it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker-upper to make up his mind. You 
will get so confused that you start in the race down long wiggled roads at breaknecking pace and gird on for miles across birdish wild space, headed, I fear, toward the most useless place, the waiting place. For people just waiting, waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come, or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to go, and they're waiting around for a yes or a no, and they're waiting for their hair to grow. Everybody's just waiting. Waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for the wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for a Friday night, or waiting perhaps for Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. Nope, that's not for you. Somehow you escape all that waiting and staying. You find the bright places where the boom bands are playing. With banners flip-flopping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky. Ready because you're just that kind of a guy. Oh, the places you will go. There is fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things that you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame! You'll be famous as famous can be with the whole world watching you on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win because they're played against you. All alone. Whether you like it or not, alone is something you'll do quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much that you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the weather be foul, you will go through the enemy's prowl. On you will go through the happernack howls, onward up many a frightening creek, though many arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get all mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And you will succeed. Yes, you will indeed. That's 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Kid, you can move mountains. So, be your name Brexton or Bixby or Brady, you're off to great places. Today is your day, your mountain is waiting. So go, get on your way. And that's my story from Dr. Seuss dedicated to our graduates. It's called The Places You Would Go and I know that great things are in store for each and every one of you. And with that, I invite you to hear our special music today by George Felty, When Will People Cease Their Fighting? <laughs>
lesson for this day takes us all the way back to Samuel. It is 1 Samuel 8 verses 4 through 20. It is based upon and paraphrased from that text. Whining. You know what I'm talking about, right? When you want something and you ask for it, and then your parent or your caregiver or your teacher or your boss tell you no. So you immediately start whining in hopes that they will give in and give you what you want. The Bible tells the story of a prophet and judge by the name of Samuel. Samuel was a great leader of the people of Israel. The people of Israel did not have a king. They had judges who led them and helped them to live in God's ways. Samuel was one of those judges. When someone had a problem, they would come to Samuel. Samuel would pray, listen for God's answer, and then offer a fair solution. In a way, though, Samuel was the ruler of the people of Israel. Samuel was getting old, and the elders and the leaders of Israel were worried about the future. Who would do Samuel's job when he was no longer able to? The elders said to Samuel, you are growing old. You need to plan for the future. All the other countries have kings to rule over them. We want a king too. This hurt Samuel's feelings. He was unhappy. He went and prayed to God and God answered. Right now, I am their ruler and I am fair and just. If they choose a king like other countries, that person might not be fair and good or make good decisions. Warn the people of this, Samuel. But they need to make their own decisions. Samuel went back to the elders and warned them. But elders told Samuel that they didn't care. They wanted a king. So Samuel anointed Saul to be the king. The people whined and wanted something different. And God and Samuel let them make their own decisions. The people got what they wanted. Saul became the new ruler, and the people celebrated. But in the end, it didn't work out as they hoped. Saul was not a good king. Saul made a lot of bad mistakes. This ends our lessons from the Old Testament. Please join me with hymn number 77 on Eagle's Wings. <laughs> lesson and the text that I'll be speaking about in just a minute is from 2nd Corinthians 4 and I'm going to start with verse 13 but just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scriptures I believed and I spoke we also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgivings to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. 
our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for eternal weight of glory beyond our measure. Because we look not at what God has seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, but eternal in heaven. That ends our New Testament lesson then for this day. So, when you were a kid, what was your, your favorite toy? You know, every Christmas, toy companies push us to buy the latest, the greatest, newest toy. And sometimes they do such a good job at promoting their new toys that you can't even buy them off the shelf. But most of the time, those toys are just fads. They kind of come and go. They sell really good one year, and the next year, poof, they're gone. There was a survey done about toys, and I found it kind of interesting. If you were a product of the 20s or the 30s, you were a kid in the 20s and 30s, you're getting pretty old by now, but that's when, remember, red radio flyer wagons came out. Of course, you can still buy a wagon, a red radio flyer today. It's kind of interesting. If you were a kid from the 60s, you will remember, and I remember these, Etra sketches. Matter of fact, I've bought even my grandkids Etra sketches. They're still available, and they're lots of fun. And my granddaughter Charlotte has a slip and slide. And those are a couple of toys that are from the 70s. If you're a product of the 80s, however, particularly the early 80s. That's when Nerf balls come out. You can still buy them. And that's when Paddington Bear came out. And you can still buy a Paddington Bear. Of course, one of the favorites always is American Girl dolls. It's also the time that Weebles came out. I'm sure it's hard for toy designers to know which toy is going to be a hit and which one will be played with and put in the closet or played with and passed down to younger brothers and sisters and remembered with fondness or even collected by antique dealers. I can remember my favorite toy. My favorite toy was Lincoln Logs. Remember those? Actually, for many years, you couldn't buy them, but lately, again, you could find them in the stores. I'll bet you one thing though, again, one of the favorites from the 70s was Weebles, and I can remember those. I'll bet that they never expected that, that little egg-shaped doll would be as popular as they were then or they are now. Matter of fact, I even remember the song. Remember it goes, Weebles wobble, but they won't fall down. Well, it went something like that at least. Weebles had a, a weight on the bottom that they could be knocked over and bang, they bounce right back up again. Now, I thought about toys and I thought about Weebles specifically as I read this Bible passage. Paul writes, therefore do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. Paul knew what it was like to have status and success, particularly in religious communities. But he also knew what it was like to lose that status and that success, as well as everything else that defined him once he committed himself to Jesus Christ. 
Paul knew that life had a tendency to hit us, to punch us, to slam us to the ground. When we try to make a significant change in our life. The trouble is, though, we're not weebles. We're not guaranteed to bounce back when we get knocked down. And we often need help. In this Bible passage, Paul shares with us the secret of strength and resilience that even joy in the face of hardship and trouble brings. Here's what he's saying. He's saying, don't allow discouragement to defeat you when hardships and troubles come. And trust me, my friends, hardship and troubles will come. Again, one of my least favorite texts in the Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. I kind of would hope and would really dream the day that a protective bubble would be around me. But it's not the case. So Paul writes, do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. He means here that life takes its toll. And we know that. Physically, emotionally, mentally, financially, Paul knew what hardships do to us. And life does take its toll. Life is hard sometimes. It's easy to get discouraged. The secret to a successful life is, as Paul says, do not lose heart. Don't give up. Hang in there. And give God a chance to help you. Let's do a little experiment here. Close your eyes for just a second. Imagine that I just dumped 10,000 plastic Easter eggs in your backyard. I assure you that inside one of those hollow Easter eggs is a check for $1 million with your name on it. So the question is, would you get discouraged if you open up the first 100? How about 500 eggs and not find the check? How about if it was 1,000 eggs? I would think not. You would just keep opening up those eggs, just waiting for that moment when you find that check. You know it's there. It's been promised to you. So think about Paul's life. He's beaten. He's stoned. He's in prison. He's shipwrecked. He's starved and he's rejected. And yet Paul said that his suffering was nothing, nothing compared to the glory that would come. As he says in today's lessons, therefore do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but as what is unseen, since what is temporary is just that temporary. But what is eternal? That, my friends, will last forever. Paul opened a lot of empty Easter eggs, but he never gave up. He believed that something great was in his future. Perhaps it feels to you as if your life is going no place. Like all you're doing is opening up those empty Easter eggs. Well, let me give you encouragement for today. Don't give up. Some of the greatest accomplishments have been made by people who simply gritted their teeth and held on and kept going. Don't lose heart, wrote Paul. Paul was also looking toward things as yet unseen. 
Hope, and hope is so important. Hope kept him from losing heart. Belief in what God will do. That is the first step we need in order to keep losing our heart, to strengthen the inner person, even if that outer person is wasting away. Don't let discouragement encourage you to just throw in the towel. Don't let it defeat you. Now, the second step, I think, is the focus on the task at hand. Wise people learn to let go of both their regrets about the past and anxiety about the future and to concentrate on the necessary things that they need to concentrate on for today. Now, I don't mean here you don't make plans, but keep your focus on today with your eye toward the future. It's too late to do anything about the past. We all know that. We can't change it. We can learn from it. It is history. Hopefully we do. But who knows what tomorrow will bring? Besides, tomorrow will be determined at least in part by how we perform and what we do today. So let's shut the door on the past and let's leave the future into God's hands and let's, let's make a purposeful and productive day of this day. How do we strengthen that inner person? By not losing heart. By focusing on what's at hand. And what a powerful lesson that is. Be fully engaged in the right now. Do the best job you can today. And remember that the mistakes you make today could impact your future. So walk cautiously. How much more effective would you be if you practiced every day being fully available in the present? How could God use you if you gave yourself fully to the relationship and the opportunities that are right in front of you. Big word there, opportunities. Always look for the opportunities. What could God reveal to you if you believe that God is working in the unseen things right now on your behalf in your life? That question leads us to the third way that we can keep going when life's trouble comes. And this is the essential key of it all. And that's to simply trust God. We can't stop the wasting away. The years go by. Frankly, I still think I'm 36. But all I need to do is look at my driver's license and I can tell you one thing, I am not 36 anymore. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just kind of stop that clock? But we can't. It goes on. We are all hit with the burdens of life. None of us can stop that clock from ticking. We all get knocked down from time to time. But believers in Jesus do not lose heart. Like weebles, we wobble but we won't fall down either. There is no burden God will not help us to carry. There is no valley through which we walk that God will not help us walk through. So don't lose heart. Even as life takes its toll on the outer person, the inner person can be made stronger and stronger and stronger. Don't let discouragement defeat you. Focus on a task at hand. Trust in God. And know that God cares for you. Do these things. And you will be renewed inwardly, day by day. Until that day comes. When you yourself will see God 
face to face. Please join me with hymn number 452, Here I Am, Lord. graduates and let you all know that through your gifting here at St. Paul's our educational program is well and continues and so I invite you today to be very generous in your gifting to help support our Christian education program and our youth ministries please be with me for a moment of prayer wondrous God you've gifted us with many things including this amazing gift of life and then life eternal through your gifting this day may the money be used to teach our young about the stories of our faith. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to hear our offering music. It is once again by George Felty. It is called God of Freedom, God of Justice. <laughs> Out of your abundance, O oh God, we have been blessed in so many ways. Reveal to us now what it is that we can offer to you in return. Bless what we give of ourselves, not because it is much, but because it is given in earnest. As we recognize our dependence on your grace, remind us that your ways are higher than our own and that you use what we offer to extend that same grace into the world. Amen. Please join with me then in the doxology. please run out to the kitchen and get a glass of wine or some grape juice or a piece of bread so that you can share with me. We are called to confess our sins before the living, loving God. I invite you to join with me then 
in doing so, but also in sharing with me the apostolic affirmation of our faith, which is found on page 359 of your hymn book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Share with me then also in the prayer of confession, which you will find printed in your bulletin. Though your light shines in the darkest valleys, we confess that too often we do not see it, or even worse, we turn our eyes because we choose not to see. When you shine a light on the injustices in this land and beyond, you point us to the very places where you are already at work. Come, you say, come and build my kingdom here. No, it's too often the answer we give. Choosing to stay comfortable, we remain in our own will, expecting someone else to do all the work. Too often we turn our attention to things that matter more to us than to others. Forgive our selfishness, O God. Lift us out of our old doldrums and bring us once again to life, new life. Lead our spirits by your spirit from places of stagnation to places of movement and life in the name of Jesus Christ. Move us with the same winds that blew across the waters of creation and lead us to do your work in the world. Forgive us, Holy God, for refusing your guidance. Work in us now, we pray. Amen. Be assured that through Christ's death on the cross and resurrection from the grave that our sins are forgiven. Thanks be then to God. Amen. Jesus. I am the bread of life. Anyone who comes to me shall not hunger. Anyone who believes in me will never thirst. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life and for your abiding love which brings us close to you, the source of all blessings. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary, to live in our midst to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those who Jesus loved. We rejoice that in a perfect victory over the grave, you raised Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church, by which your work may be done in this world, and through which we share the gifts of eternal life. With the faithful of every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God, most high. We remember that in the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread and broke the bread. And in the same way for supper, Jesus took the cup and blessed the cup.
Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon us. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon us. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon us and grant us peace. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, and bless us that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise. May we be united with one another and with you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we be assured this day that through the blood of the Lamb, our sins have been forgiven and truly the slate has been washed clean. This table then is open to all who confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So come to the sacred table then, not because you must, but because you may. Come to the sacred table then, not because you are fulfilled, but because of your emptiness you stand in need of God's mercy. Come to the sacred table then, not wanting to express your own opinion, but seeking the still speaking voice of God. And Jesus took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the covenant of my blood shed for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table one more time, where we have known the presence of Christ, received all Christ's gifts, strengthened our faith, increased our love one for the other, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, we pray. Amen. I invite you now to lift up your silent, your most intimate thoughts and prayers to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor you now with the prayer that you taught so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please share with me our commissioning, which today is adapted from the prayer of St. Patrick. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me. Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ on the right, Christ on the left. Christ when I lie down, Christ when I stand up. Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks to me. Christ in the eyes that see me. Christ in the ears that hear me. Arise this day through the mighty strength of God. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace and grace. Go this day in God's love. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. May God bless you. Have a great rest of the week. Amen.